I woke up this morning to this email from YouTube. Hi, how to cook that? Our team has reviewed your content and unfortunately we think it violates our harmful and dangerous policy. We've removed the following content from YouTube. Debunking deadliest craft hack 34 dead. We know this might be disappointing, but it is important to us that YouTube is a safe place for all. Content that encourages or promotes harmful or dangerous activities that have a risk of serious physical harm or death are not allowed on YouTube. If you missed my last video, the one that's now been banned, I explained the dangers, the extreme danger of fractal wood burning. In fact, the video was entitled 34 deaths because there's been 34 deaths in the US already, and that's just ones that were reported in the newspaper. I've since found out there's been 30 deaths reported in the UK and I know there's some here in Australia and no doubt around the world. The video's purpose was very clear was to tell people not to do it. My purpose was to get the video to get enough views and enough momentum that that video would appear when you searched for fractal wood burning. I wanted it to be in the search result one or two because those ones get the most clicks. We'd managed to get it all the way to number three so it was nearly there when people search fractal wood burning and when I started reading comments like this one that says you probably just saved my life here. I'd watched a video earlier this week with that type of wood burning and a plan to try it myself tomorrow. Now I've completely scrapped that idea. And I thought when I read that comment, the whole video was worthwhile. If it's prevented one person who didn't know what they were doing from doing it and dying, it's worth the video. But since then, those comments just kept coming of people saying that they'd watched videos, they were going to try it, they were about to try it. People we knew were talking to us saying they were trying it this weekend and they didn't realize just how dangerous it was. There was even a comment from an ER doctor who said, I had to look a woman in the eyes and tell her I was sorry for her loss. Her husband died in my ER after electrocuting himself doing wood burning. Diana commented saying, my husband died five years ago doing fractal wood burning. Please don't do it. It isn't the way to go. And that was the last comment on the video before YouTube banned it, saying that it's not safe for the community. So my first thought actually was, maybe we've made a difference. Maybe, just maybe, they might have banned all the videos on fractal wood burning and that will make a huge impact. But when I searched on YouTube for fractal wood burning uh, using a microwave transformer, the videos are all still there on how to do it. There's how-to videos that show in detail how to get a microwave transformer and plug all the parts in to make a fractal wood burning machine. But the video that it said, don't do it, it's ridiculously dangerous and has killed lots of people already, that one's not safe. They had to take that one down. It's just ridiculous. I will of course fill out YouTube's form to challenge this, see if we can get the ban removed and get the video reinstated, but the damage has been done. That video now has had zero views for a day and longer by the time they process it, which is like taking a video that had lots of momentum. It was number one on Reddit videos. It had been shared on other websites that were writing articles about the dangers of wood burning. It's like taking that momentum of like a ball going downhill, picking it up, and then saying, oh yeah, we'll put it back on again on flat ground. It's really hard to get it rolling again and get that momentum that it needs to get it to the top when people search for fractal wood burning. So that then made me really sad and really disappointed because the whole purpose of it is to warn people. And now thanks to YouTube, a whole lot less people are gonna see that warning. So at the risk of getting another ban and getting a channel strike, which is personally very damaging, I'm going to post here again that section of the fractal wood burning video warning you not to do it because I think your life is more important than my channel. Now to the most dangerous hack that I have seen yet. This hack has already killed 34 people in the US and that is only counting the ones that have been reported in newspapers. There may well be a lot more than that and certainly there are many more around the world. The hack is called fractal wood burning or Lichtenberg wood burning. There are heaps of videos on TikTok showing people doing it. Essentially it uses electricity to burn a lightning or a tree like pattern into wood that's been dampened. The results are unique every time and it does look pretty impressive, which is why people want to try it for themselves. Then they head over to YouTube and find more videos showing people doing it, including how-to videos that show you how to make your own fractal wood burning device using parts from an old microwave. 
It is so dangerous that the American Association of Woodturners has banned any demonstrations of it at their events and they will not publish anything about it on their website except for articles saying how dangerous it is. So why is it so dangerous? Well, to explain that, let me draw you a picture. We'll start with our piece of wood and then we'll wet that with a mixture of water and bicarb. Then over here we have a power point that we will plug the machine into and in the middle here we have a box which in most how-to videos is a transformer that has been taken out of a microwave. So they attach one side of the transformer to the power supply and on the other side they have a couple of car jumper cables and in these alligator clips they add long metal spikes that they touch the wood with. Then you turn it on and the electric current starts to burn patterns into the wood. One of the problems with this hack is that people don't understand what is happening inside the microwave transformer. On this side, the wire does a few turns around, but on the other side, it has lots and lots and lots of turns. And what that effectively does is it takes the 120 volts or 240 volts that are coming from the power outlet, depending on where you live, and it transforms that into 2000 volts which means if you accidentally touch the metal on those alligator clips, or you touch the wood, or you touch the table if it's not on a non-conductive surface, you are gonna be delivered 10 times the amount of power that's needed to stop your heartbeat. And in seven out of 10 cases, the person is dead before they even hit the floor. There is just no margin for error here. One little lapse in concentration, one little error, and you're dead. It's not a good hack for anyone to try. And you'll remember from our previous video that was talking about electricity and it had that stupid metal electric plug which short circuits everything and is dangerous in itself. But you'll remember in that that the residual current device on our house flicks the power off because it notices there's something wrong and as a safety measure, it flicks it off. And most modern houses have a device or some sort of safety device that's gonna flick the power off if someone's getting electrocuted. Well, that doesn't happen with this machine. And once again, the problem is what's happening inside that microwave transformer. You may have noticed that there are no wires connecting one side of the transformer to the other. The charge actually passes from one winding to the other using a pulsing magnetic field. So in this half, everything continues to operate as normal. The safety switch doesn't kick in because it's not noticing anything abnormal happening. In one sad case in Wisconsin where a couple were both electrocuted, if, if someone is being electrocuted, it's important you turn off the power before you touch them or you also will be electrocuted. And then in their case after that, because the power continued to go through, the whole house burnt down. We do know that the fire started in the garage before spreading to the home. We believe that the fractal wood burning equipment that caused the elect electrocutions likely started the fire. Now that you know just how many volts of electricity are going through that and that there is no safety off switch, I want you to watch a couple of these clips again and tell me, would you walk this close to a fractal wood burning machine knowing if you just brush that wood with your leg, there's a seven out of 10 chance that you're dead. Would you hold these alligator clips in your hand as so many videos show people doing? knowing that one little mishap, you slightly touch that metal and it's all over. Well, sadly, this guy learnt that the hard way and his widow in an interview with a local newspaper said that he was not aware of the dangers. She went on to say, we knew he could get a shock, but we had no idea it could kill you. There were no warnings with the videos. If he had have known, he never would have done it. There is a small number of people who have managed to survive a fractal wood burning injury and that is usually due to the fact they've got someone watching who has managed to turn off the power immediately, start CPR because their heart has stopped and by some miracle emergency services managed to get to their house within a few minutes which is pretty rare here in Australia. I don't know about the rest of the world but even those people aren't left unscathed. They usually have very bad injuries to their hands and permanent injury to their hearts. Mary Calhoun was walking with her fractal wood burning device. She'd finished using it and she tripped as she went to put it somewhere and turned it on accidentally. This is what her hands looked like after the surgeons had tried to rescue them so that she had some functionality for the rest of her life. Trust me, you don't want to see the before photos. We're talking severe burns. We're talking 2,000 volts here. We're not playing with 
tiny amounts of current. This is just not worth the risk, people. And in case you're thinking, oh, well, she should have been wearing insulating gloves that would protect her from the electricity. Part of the problem is if you do that, the rest of your body could still brush up against the table or the wood or anywhere else. It's not just your hands, but also people don't know how many volts they're dealing with. So the insulating gloves are often not enough. Listen to this from Brem from Utah. I remember just gasping for air, looking down and seeing the smoke coming off of my gloves that were basically welded to my hands. And just in case there are any electricians out there who are thinking, well, of course it's dangerous, it's electricity, but if you know what you're doing and you're careful, you'll be fine, I'll be fine to do this. Two of the deaths that I flashed up before were men who were experienced electricians and they left behind their wife and kids. So don't do it, it is just not worth it. If I had my way, YouTube would make a policy against dangerous hacks and dangerous how-to videos. They've got one against dangerous pranks and dangerous challenges. Why isn't there one for dangerous hacks? I don't know, but I feel like we've been waiting a long time for them to listen on this one, so it's up to you. If you know anyone who is thinking about doing fractal wood burning, please share this video with them because you might just save their life. With thanks to my wonderful patrons for all of your support that allows me to make these sort of videos. If you liked this video, please do like, comment, subscribe, share, tell the algorithm that you liked it so that more people will get to see it and will see the warning. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.